of this podcast. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm. Re- this has been in the works for a while. I'm really excited to talk to you. This is our first time meeting kind of over the air. We we had talked over text for a while, but really excited to kind of talk to you, learn about your journey, your story, and what brought you to the videography world. So before we get started, I'll just have you introduce yourself and talk about the your company and what you do. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. My name is Jacob Navi, and I'm a video producer here in Indianapolis. And I also do freelance camera department stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's a little bit of, yeah. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a mix between client work and freelance work here in Indy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can kind of just jump into your, right into your story. So kind of talk about, you know, how you got into videography, how you got into, you know, working with cameras, where that kind of started for you. Yeah. So it was like, probably the same like pretty similar with everyone like back in middle school just making dumb youtube videos with friends on iMovie (laughs) and then that gradually kept on going throughout high school and I started shooting some weddings in high school and some like small nonprofit videos in high school and that was like around freshman sophomore year and then I kept on going with that and shot weddings on the weekends all the way throughout high school and just made like YouTube videos and like small business videos in high school and kept on going with that until senior year I got asked to move to LA for a short amount of time and shoot a project for this actor on Netflix and I was like sure why not what about what don't what else am I doing after high school? So yeah. I went to do that and I worked on that project for about a year. And then I moved back to Indiana and moved to Indianapolis, started my production company. And it's been going on for about two years now. Navi Productions and the niche that I'm trying to really fill in right now with Navi Productions is creating community building content. So local community uh, content for economic development boards and organizations that are really community focused. And then also a double meaning to it is community building communities online for YouTube channels and, and people that are trying to build an audience online. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm focusing on with Navi productions. And then, kind of got some other like half ventures that I'm trying to go into with some other friends but Navi Productions is kind of the main thing where I have all my clients and then I freelance a lot around here on my friends sets and just kind of have fun doing camera department stuff so yeah so I want to talk about kind of all of that and each, each kind of step there so back to back to kind of what you were doing in middle school and high school with the weddings and stuff what because weddings are kind of their own beast in itself with videography. Sure. So yeah. kind of what kind of got you into weddings and A, kind of what got you into weddings and B, like did you kind of get to the point where you were actually starting to charge for wedding videography and kind of talk about that kind of process with weddings in high school especially because, you know, people some people might like see your work and be like, okay, just based on your work, you're really good. But other people might be like, he's just a high schooler. What Like what can he do? So kind of talk about that whole process of, how you got into videography and the weddings specifically. Yeah, weddings are a beast. They're yeah. they're they're pretty they're pretty good to just I would say like if you're really wanting wanting to get into video production and like videography, more run and gun stuff than like weddings are a great learning experience to to have. And also like for the experience of it and the money from it it's it's just a good like video genre and videography to get into especially at the start and I I learned a lot about in the moment getting the shot and camera gear and the business behind it and how to deal with clients and editing turnaround time and just so much stuff I learned from weddings because I've been doing it for six years and I don't really promote that I do them a lot anymore, Mm -hmm. uh, but I think they're definitely like a huge uh, way to learn about filmmaking and videography. And I'll definitely like recommend people kind of starting out to get into them because you could build up your gear and build up 
your experience with that one type of job. And there's yeah, a yeah. really good blueprint already based around it online and like online blueprint on the business of it and like on kind of the formula to the videos and stuff. And it's just very, it's a really good place to start. Yeah. I, I hear that a lot from people that, you know, it's a, is a good place to start. There's a lot of money in there. You can learn a lot of different aspects of your business. But the thing that I hear a lot from wedding videographers is that it's very blueprint based. Like it's very like, especially once you do like your first 10, first 15, you kind of get to the point where everyone's more or less the same. You're doing like you find your style and you're just kind of like recruiting that blueprint. So is that kind of why you're you're focusing on maybe a different area and not doing weddings? Because I I feel like there's the there's the person that does the weddings to start and then they move on to a different area of videography or there's the person that does weddings. They love it and they've done weddings for 20 years. Like they just keep doing weddings. Yeah. So is that kind of why you are switching out of weddings? Yeah, and you could you could like focus more on the business side of it or the the artistic side of it. And there's definitely it's like it's what you make it if you want to be have the most unique wedding videos ever and like couples and stuff, then you could definitely lean into that artistic side of it. But you could also lean in a lot to the business side of it. And I think I gathered a lot more from the business side of weddings than anything. And I'm moving forward, still doing them, but with a partner and we're building a brand out of it instead of it being associated with like my name or Navi Productions, it's going to be its own brand and its own thing. So that's how I'm continuing to move forward with it. And I kind of Mm -hmm. figured out that's what I need to do if I'm going to continue with them. I need it needs to be its own separate brand and thing or else I just wasn't going to take on anymore. So that that's kind of the way I figured out that I need to do them is like that and have its weddings have their own brand and build mm-hmm. a team around that. But definitely like solo doing them yourself and then figuring out systems in place to, to make it like efficient for you is definitely a good. That's kind of how I started. It was like just me. So <laughs> the story is like just me. I don't know, before I had a car freshman year, my mom would drive me around to (laughs) some weddings. (laughs) Yeah. Crazy. So the first one was just terrible. And they I got paid like 50 bucks for it. I think I had my T5i (laughs) and my kit lens and all that. (laughs) No second shooter. I didn't know like that was important at all. And yeah, yeah, I just edited it. And it wasn't even it wasn't premiere at the time. It was like some some other weird <laughs> editing in LE, but yeah, I got paid 50 bucks for it, delivered it like two weeks after, and it was really cheesy and corny and just like <laughs> terrible on my yeah. end. Everything was overexposed or whatever, oh. and it was great. It was great. And then the next one was my cousin's, and he paid me $100 for his wedding video. And I was like slightly better, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then it just like keeps evolving from that. And then you kind of like show up in high school and shoot a couple weddings like on the weekends. And that just kind of becomes your job that you do. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I don't need to, you know, work at Kroger's anymore. I could kind of just do this. And then I figured out a system in place and just kept going on with that. And my mom was super encouraging about it and was like, this is great. Just like keep on doing this if if this is because you keep like learning so much about the business and the the craft of it. And it was just super important to learn that. So absolutely. Yeah. And like getting that start in high school, especially like I there's a couple guys that I've gotten connected with here and up here in Warsaw that are either in high school or just out of high school and college. And the stuff that I see them creating, like, and the the people that I see them starting to work with, like, I know that they're going to go really far because they're getting that start in high school. Yeah. And I, I see that I see how valuable it is for them to get those those starts because, like, I've talked with them before and y- there's still some of that high school, like, na- 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 nativity of, like, they mm-hmm. don't really know what to, like, charge or what to, how to deal with clients, how to invoice, how to do all these like, business things but they're really good at shooting. And so you're like, okay, you'll figure out the business stuff. But if you're really good at shooting now and you're like starting to get those clients and learning how to work with clients, especially like at such a young age, like you can go really far and make that a business, you know, straight out of, 
either straight out of college or straight out of high school if you want to. Um, and so kind of going off of that, you decided that you weren't going to go to college. You started your production company straight out of high school. Talk about kind of what led that, to that decision and why you made that. And obviously it's been the right decision for you so far, or it maybe wasn't the right decision. Kind of just talk about all of that and why you yeah. chose that route. Yeah, it was definitely a probably a bold choice, but I just kind of like looked into film school and all that during high school when like junior year or sophomore year I was kind of looking around that about what it would be like like what am I going to do after high school and Mm -hmm. just from all the opinions I've gathered online and to talking to real people that went to film school and just went to college and then seeing what I was learning on the internet I'm like it probably doesn't make sense for me to like go into debt to learn all this stuff. And that's not something that I like felt comfortable with. So I just kind of wanted to right out of high school. I mean, after graduating high school, I just kind of wanted to do my own thing and continue with doing the weddings. And that was like really stable for me during the weddings. And then on top of that, I started to pick up more uh, small business kind of corporate video work and seeing like how much that kind of brought into and then that I learned more about business doing that and learned more about the craft doing that too and then after wait sorry (laughs) stumbled there man where was I Uh, just kind of after high school learning about the craft getting some small business clients yeah like that yeah It, it was really like that opportunity to go to LA and make that documentary is what kind of like solidified that like, oh, I need to be in the real world, like doing this stuff, because that's how I'm going to learn. And I feel like I start learning kind of about life after school in a way. Mm -hmm. And working on that documentary, I was out in LA living with this actor for four months, recording him every day. And like, learning about his work ethic and how hard he works to get the things he he wanted. And then I, after that four months of filming that documentary, I came back to Indiana to my hometown and got a little office, like a little office space in my hometown of Batesville and just worked my butt off editing that documentary and picking up new clients and just like fully zoning in on this production company. And it really, it really started after I went to LA is like, I was so obsessed with like starting it and putting it on. And that's like all I did. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the documentary finished, I moved to Indianapolis and found all these new friends and this, this network of people. And I still had my client projects going on, my client work going on, but I kind of found that freelancing is a way better way to grow my crafts now that I'm at this certain point. So I started to do just do freelancing more on bigger sets and with like other production companies and agencies and just to kind of see how those big sets operate. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely valuable too. So now I'm kind of like, I think if, you know, if you're a videographer starting out, I'll highly recommend like PAing on sets around the cities near you and also doing weddings i feel like that's like a killer combo for someone that wants to get into to filmmaking yeah definitely i i hear all the time from either videographers that are bigger than both we are or like kind of people our age that like peeing on sets and like going to working with agencies especially is a great way to start because you learn kind of that big set feel of like what all they're doing because it's it's run like a machine like there's there's very specific roles to everybody. There's the, you know, the assistant director versus the second AD versus the assistant camera or cinematographer. Like everybody has a specific role and like they do the, the the one thing, like whether it's their role is to do the, to get all the actors ready or their role is to get the, uh, run the second production set or their role is this or that they run it very specifically. And so it's very, a very good way to, Kind of understand how those sets work and bring some of that to your own sets to give it a more professional feel i want to go back to that documentary though and kind of talk about that process 
partially because I'm just interested and I think it'd be a really great story to tell, but also because yeah. I'm starting to talk about doing a documentary and I also kind of want to hear your your process for going through that. So kind of talk about what that documentary was, how you got connected with the actor, and just kind of go from there and talk about the story of that production. Yeah, it's a insane, insanely crazy story that could only like happen in this generation because of the internet and connecting with people. And I think like social media has its downfalls, but at the end of the day, it's like a double edged sword and there's really great things that come from it. So with that in mind, the story was senior year. I just like made, made some spec videos and stuff and I went, I was really like following Gary V at the time. I'd listen to him like all the time, almost every day in the morning. And I knew his videographer, D-Rock, and followed him on Instagram. So he made a networking post. I commented in that networking post, a comment being like something about, I would love to be, I would love to like be a D-Rock or like a videographer or something like that, like that I... Mm -hmm. I liked the position he was in and that like I would love to do that for someone else. So posting that con comment and like had some of the spec work already on my Instagram. This actor Hunter Cloudus in LA saw it because he was on that networking post looking for a videographer. He DM'd me. I woke up the next morning, saw the DM. I'm like, this is like some spam, scam, something. Yeah. This is like not right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just thought it was like fake or something. And I looked at his stuff. I'm like, ooh, this might be legit. And so fast forward, we FaceTimed a bit. And what he wanted was me to go out there and shoot his YouTube videos and edit them. Initially, that's what he wanted. So I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> and yeah. so I also had a girlfriend at the time and he wanted me to be out there the whole summer of 2020. And that's when I graduated. So I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. Graduated, moved out there for the summer for four months and lived in his home. Kind of was just his roommate, filmed his workouts every morning filmed him and the whole documentary and the process of how he got into character for the TV show, which is all American mm -hmm. and how he got into character, how he, what his mindsets are and his like daily rituals are. And just like this whole kind of documentary about how he got in the character basically for the show for like season four of all American and which was big at the time for him because that was like a, a way bigger character that he got into for the show. Oh, yeah. So that that's what the whole thing was based around. And we did make some YouTube videos, but like halfway through, he wanted it to be a documentary. And I'm like, OK, let's make a documentary. <laughs> so that was just a that was an awesome experience. Oh, yeah. And Sorry. for those who you don't, don't know. Hunter plays JJ Parker on All American, who's a pretty big character, very important character in the show. So that's a big deal to to get that job. So what was the documentary about? What did he what did he kind of want? And what was what story was it? I guess just the story of him getting character yeah. or was it yeah. Yeah, yeah. The story was pretty much him getting in the character. The biggest thing that he wanted to show off was like his more of the mindset that he had about like mm -hmm. training in general and about it it was also like looking through the whole thing, him telling his story about how he got to where he's at right now too. Yeah. And where he is in his acting career and where he like wants to go. And he really like sets himself up in a good place with all the episodes of of really showing like the audience his mindset around just his his work and his whole mentality is really inspiring and like it, it hits really hard his work ethic and that's i think that's the main thing he really wanted to show off but it's also just a story about him and his life and kind of how where he started in chattanooga tennessee moving out here 
at 18 years old with like a thousand bucks and <laughs> you know yeah. living on people's couches a little bit and he, he like talks about that and just kind of the the process of what he had to go through and then gradually working himself way up to this the show and this character and a bigger role in the show and where he's at so i think that was super cool to to just be there in that moment when i was 18 and i i went to go shoot that for him when i was around the same age that he went out there too so it was just super cool to to meet and like live with him for a while and do that whole thing and I didn't really have a lot of experience in making documentaries. So the whole thing was completely new to me mm -hmm. and we would do a ton of pre pro and storyboarding and, and all this stuff for it. And just like making something narrative like that was a little different. So there's definitely a lot that I learned and want to do better at, but at the end of the day, it was a good, it was a really good experience to do. Yeah, for sure. Talk about talk about that pre-production process as somebody who's going into I have like a kind of a meeting like pitch meeting kind of on the doc documentary I'm working on mm -hmm. on Wednesday. So I'm kind of curious to hear your process. Talk about kind of a the pre-production you're doing and how you're thinking about crafting the documentary. Like, are you are you telling the story in your head and kind of shooting as you go? Or is the story come together in the edit? Like kind of what what was your process for actually like crafting the story you wanted to tell yeah. yeah it was it was just me and him and he had a lot of say on kind of what he wanted it to be there's definitely like things that looking back like i, I would want to change but i think like the pre-pro for it was a lot of us sitting down and seeing like what documentary type stuff inspired us and what shows kind of inspired us <laughs> in this like realm of what he was doing and we sat down and, and picked those things out and like some things we liked out of those shows and documentaries that inspired us and then we would kind of craft his story leading up to the first shoot day of the show and that was kind of like the the conflict was like will he really be in shape as okay. much as he wants to be for that first shoot day and like really show up, show up on that first shoot day the best he can be, or will he like, you know, kind of struggle with it and, and not show up like that. Cause it's all in the acting realm. It's, it's, it's just all like so much based around self-improvement and like working on the yourself physically and like getting in mentally and where you need to be for that character and like doing all this preparation for that first day. And that that's kind of like what the main timeline of it was and conflict was that. And then the last episode is kind of more about looking back on, on filming the whole season of the show, the pre pro that we did, it was a documentary. So we, we kind of got like, a gist of what we wanted to do week by week, but we didn't really have full, like he would go on these tangents and like kind of motivational talks a lot. And so he just knew what he wanted to say. And I just kind of documented it. And after a while I knew like what I started to know him better and know like what, what parts need to be in this documentary to really show him off and like show mm -hmm. show the story so it was a lot of trial, trial and error and trying to just like tell tell his story in this kind of authentic way that i felt and yeah pre-pro is it's a lot of just like trying to get a direction i don't think it was like very planned planned but a lot of it mm -hmm. came together in the edit because that's just how my first documentary went and I, yeah. I didn't know much. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like, was, I feel like when, whenever I shoot things that maybe have more of a story behind them, as opposed to just like a montage type type video, it, everything like the story kind of changes in the edit. Like you see, you see things differently. Like when you're shooting in camera, you're, 
you're really focused on getting the shot and you have kind of a shot list in mind. But when you're in the edit, you kind of see how things pair up differently. Was that kind of the, your case of like, no. you know, this B-roll shot that we got or this shot of him working out or this shot of him on set or whatever, this pairs up mm-hmm. with what he, this tangent he went on really well. And like, I'm, I have this idea for this direction of the documentary, but like this really works better. So I'm going to craft it in this way. Is that kind of the, the process mm-hmm. you went through? Yeah. Yeah, definitely for documentary stuff, that's how it goes. Because like, a, none of it was really scripted. We we just kind of had bullet points of what we wanted from from like the pre pro side. A lot of the pre pro was more like visual kind of mood boards and kind of more logistical things of when we're going to go to a location or do the certain shot or certain montage or like kind of points that we wanted in there, but. Not a lot of it was like fully scripted out shot by shot. It was it wasn't like that. So uh, documentaries are a little bit of a different, a, a way different thing than I feel like how like a a short form or a short film or or something would go. So that was, that was interesting to work that muscle. Yeah, is that something that I know you kind of talked about doing like the community based videos? Is that like something? that you want to do more of like the documentary style or was it kind of like it might be cool a couple times but it's a lot of work I don't I want to focus on this area instead yeah I've actually been have this community client that we we do these documentary commercials for these these kind of small towns all across Indiana and Kentucky and slowly getting across the United States but it's these kind of short documentary commercials about these cities and about the community that we do. So it's been a lot of documentary work lately and it's been cool to see how like shooting the hunter thing is so like tightly related to the work that I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so kind of after, after you got back from LA, you decided to kind of start your own production company. You're going that direction. Talk, I want to, I kind of want to hear the story about how you're starting to get clients after that. Was it, is it networking? Is it cold outreach? Is it just PAing on sets and getting relations that way? Kind of like talk about how you're getting your first clients and how you are getting those, like, especially the bigger clients. Like how, how did that process start for you? Yeah, so when I came back to Batesville, which is my hometown, after shooting the documentary, I had a just kind of built up a network within my hometown of these businesses and and people that I'll do work for. And I had a really good client base there, and I still do have a good client base there. And I got that network through really it just being kind of lucky and it being a small town. Being a small town, like it's pretty easy to to network and know everyone there and know all the businesses there and get work. I got a lot of my work through my mentor, which is he's in web design. So it's like a adjacent industry, adjacent to video mm-hmm. production. So that he gave me a ton of clients because he's in the web design world and doesn't want to be in the video world. He does it a little bit, but he doesn't want to to be in there. So really all of my hometown clients happened through having that connection with my mentor and him being in that adjacent industry that's in marketing and advertising and his clients need video. So it's it was a good partnership that we had and still have. And now I'm kind of starting to move away from kind of my clients and my hometown just because the work here is is interests me a bit more and is like it's this freelance work and it's also a little bit of client work but it's just I'm I'm learning a lot up here and yeah it's just different in a good way so moving to Indy it was tough I didn't know anyone in Indy I moved here 2021 January 2021 had no friends here, had no clients here, except for one actually. I had one client here. Yeah. <laughs> but I knew no one in the film industry and really just didn't have much lined up when I first moved here. And then I met some really great friends that are my best friends now off of Instagram too. That also happened mm-hmm. off of social media. I met them there and we connected 
and went on a cool trip together and hung out a ton. And I started to meet more friends from the internet too on Instagram and just, it just became a circle of like really good dudes that became my friends here in Indy and would work on their sets and then meet new production companies and meet new agencies and start to just freelance and PA on anything. And then it just slowly spiraled to now it's like, it's been a year and a half that I've been here and I, I feel like I'm at home and I feel like I have such a strong community of people. The freelancing and film community is awesome here. And then also just like the, the group of friends that I have here that are all doing their own thing is, mm -hmm. is great. So did it when you, I'm, cause I'm from, so I'm from Warsaw, Indiana, which is kind of straight north of Indy, about two hours near Fort Wayne, near Elkhart, near South Bend, that kind of area. When you, when you moved to Indy, was there a worry from you that it was kind of like that small or yeah, small fish in a big pond? Like a ton, there's already a ton of production companies here. There's already a ton of people, agencies, like they already have their guys. I won't be able to find mm -hmm. clients. Like it was, how did you kind of, battle maybe any doubt that you had moving there because like when you move to a big city like especially something like that there are there's already a lot of people there and so you're kind of fighting through that to get yourself yeah. known so what was that process like yeah that's definitely what i thought like initially about indianapolis was like it's it's going to be a bigger font it's going to be a bigger pond and there's going to be a lot more people here but it's just there's there's always room to to grow and there's always room for like left of the pie and and people here so just i knew that just by like helping and kind of providing value to people i'll be i'll be able to get you know the things i want by just kind of showing up and and being there and it really i mean it started with like peeing on sets and doing there's this one guy that connected me onto one PA gig and then it just kind of, you start to meet people on set and then you get called on again and then meet more people. And then after a year of just like working on sets in Indy, you know, like 90% of the people that work on all the big stuff around here. And you know, you know, the filmmaking community, at least in Indianapolis, it's like, it's not that big. It's like, I know everyone that works on all the big commercials that come across here or like all the sports stuff, like you just kind of start to know everyone after a year. And it's, it's cool to see, honestly, Indianapolis is like a really good spot because everyone is trying to help each other and not tear each other down, which mm -hmm. I think is really cool. And it's just such a really like genuine community of people in the film industry and everyone's trying to, work on their own thing and, and help each other. And it's really, it's really great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, once you kind of, it's, it's one of those things where you have to be really patient about it too. That's something that I've been learning as I've kind of grown my production company and started my production company is you can't force it in a way. Like you can do a lot of cold mm -hmm. outreach. You can reach out to people. You can make connections in that way. But like, the really good connections will kind of come as they come. Oh yeah. Is that yeah. kind of, or kind of talk about, I guess, do you, do you, how do you see that? And how are you, how did you deal with kind of just the process of growing? Was it like, I mean, you had the doc, the big documentary, which kind of helped, but how did you kind of deal with kind of that patience aspect of, of the running a business and growing a business? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so much patience involved with, with everything with, with just the the growth and like knowing that it's slow and and steady and knowing that you'll get there eventually i think is like the name of the game and just really like with clients and the production freelance stuff it's just showing up and being a good person and kind of just doing the the thing you're like being competent and you're and you're skill that you're supposed to be providing and having a good time on set and that's like i think if at the end of the day if like it's like if you just show up and you're happy to be there and you don't 
cause a lot of problems, then I think people are going <laughs> to like you enough to call you up again on set and have it happen again. And same with clients. If you do just a good job on a client project and share it and put it out there and put it on your website and your portfolio, then, and if you really give that client a good experience, like start to finish, I think they're going to start talking about you to their people that need a video. And that's just how it's been going since I started. I haven't really marketed a lot. And sometimes when I feel like I do, it's just not, it's just not the best way to, to yeah, I I almost feel like I should be just spending more time on my current project rather than spending time on marketing myself more. Yeah. I mean, there, there are times where I definitely cold outreach for sure, but those are like things I I really specifically want to do. And like, really I'm just like, I, I need to get to at some point. So, but I think everything else it's, it's like, it'll, it'll happen the way it happens. And if you're just good to work with and, show up and like know know your stuff and you'll be good Mm -hmm. yeah i think which is it's so much of a patience thing yeah yeah it's a patience thing and it's also a confidence thing i think that that i've i've found and kind of learned as you know you go through client projects maybe like you're you're just starting out like the the first few you're not maybe as confident you're letting the client lead or you're not you know you don't mm-hmm. bring that expertise that you really should have but when you kind of switch or you realize that one thing that I've I've kind of realized as I go through production is that they're hiring you to be the expert and they're not hiring you to just be a guy on a camera and so kind of when you reach out to these company or to the clients or you're working with clients you're in pre production meetings. You're they're hiring you to lead the production, depending on your role. Mm-hmm. Like if you're just a DP or whatever, like or you're just kind of a PA or something like that, maybe they're not. But if you're like a freelancer, you're a solo video shooter, they're hiring you to create the story. They might have that idea, they might have some creative lead on what they want to shoot, but they're hiring you to be the person that's gonna lead the actual creative aspect of it, decide what you want to shoot, where you want to shoot, how you want to shoot mm-hmm. it. And direct them as opposed to, because I I've, got, I've made the mistake of like going to sets or going to clients and be like, all right, what do you want to shoot today? Like if it's just a retainer kind of social media kind of gig, yeah. like what do you want? Like that's just not that's like a really bad way to start or to start that conversation because they're maybe they're expecting you to come in and be like, okay, we need to shoot you know four Instagram reels telling your story or we need to shoot four, you know, educational videos or this or that, or tell this story. Mm-hmm. We need to get connected with this person. Like they're expecting you to come in and lead that production. And so I think a lot of it is confidence as well as patience and kind of yeah. understanding how both yeah. kind of direct your process as a business owner. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, trying kind to, of close I'm trying to build off that. Yeah. No, you're, no good. you're good. You're good. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So kind of we can, if you if something to say, if you think about something, we can bring it back in. But kind of closing out the podcast, I want I always like to talk to the videographer people about gear and kind of their process, just going deep into that. Cause um, I don't know about you, but I love camera gear sometimes to a fault. Yep. <laughs> showing the the rig as well, just on the table. Love it. Cool. Yeah. So let's just kind of talk about you started on a T5i. I assume you're a Sony shooter now. And by assume, I mean I know because I saw your list on your website. But <laughs> kind of, yeah. Talk about just kind of what you roll on, roll with on a daily basis and kind of anything that you like about those pieces, things like that. Yeah. The kit is constantly changing. I'm actually building the kit out for tour content and YouTube content in mind. I'm not building it out for commercial work anymore or everything else because I'm planning to move to LA next year. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm really trying to build it out for that run and gun tour life slash YouTube stuff. So Mm -hmm. FX3, A7 IV, some lenses and stuff, very minimal lighting gear right now. I kind of sold a lot of my lights. But started on a GoPro Hero, actually, and then made it to the <laughs> T5i. <laughs> oh, wow. And yeah. then T5i to Canon ADD, and then yeah. ADD to FX3, which that wow. was like a whole... That's a jump, yeah. That was a whole year of saving money and living at my parents' house that I had. So mm-hmm. I saved up like 10 grand to just like get 
some better gear. And I, I think gear is, and soon it's going to be the FX6. And I'm really excited for that. But I think gear is also a double edged sword of like, if you're in the freelance realm, I think gear actually really matters a lot to mm-hmm. being hired onto stuff. I think if you're in the client realm, you could have anything and be good. You put a map box on it, no one cares. But yes. <laughs> I'm just that, <laughs> no, I think it is true though, because like the clients see the map box, like specifically oh, yeah. the map box, they see that and they don't know <laughs> what it is. They don't know what it does. They don't care yeah. what it does. It looks professional. Yeah, like you could have a T five I, but if you have a map box that fits your lens, like that. <laughs> That's looks what I'm really saying. Cool. Like yeah. if you're starting a production company and you have the T five I, just put a map box on it and act confident on set on a client yeah. set. This is all a joke, but like obviously the the exper- the client experience when you're dealing with clients matters a ton more than gear, uh, mm-hmm. and giving them like a good product at the end of the, end of the day and a good client experience that matters a lot. For the freelance side of stuff, people know their stuff. Production companies and agencies know their stuff. So having gear does matter along with your skill. That's like level with your skill. I wouldn't like recommend someone just buying an Aerie, like yeah, if they want to start DPing stuff. I think the gear needs to grow with your skills, mm-hmm. uh, and it does pay. It pays. Your day rate goes up the better gear you have and people rent it out and it's a part of the freelancing business. But I think if you're like client facing and you really want to focus on your production company and having clients, then I would recommend I would look into investing into your systems and your team a lot more than gear. Yeah. 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 I, def- I, I definitely agree. I think, I think, there's there's kind of there's it is a double edged sword of like gear doesn't matter versus like gear kind of matters a little bit it really mm-hmm. depends on where you are and what you do like i think gear matters in the sense that there are certain tools for the job like there are certain lights that do really well for like certain things there are certain like an 85 doesn't do the same thing as a 70 to 200 mm-hmm. doesn't do the same thing as a 50 mil like it it really depends like you know cameras that shoot 10 bit color like that kind of matters especially once you get into bigger projects like when you're editing and color grading, like those things matter. I think you learn what matters for you, yeah. especially like I, I've learned that, you know, I don't necessarily need to build out a full set of lenses if I can, if I'm really good with a couple different lenses, but I might like audio really matters to me. Like I need to invest in really good microphones or lighting really matters to me. I need to invest in a really lightweight like system of lights that I can bring and do certain things with. So I think you, you find what gear matters for you. And I think it's really important to do that instead of getting caught up in like what you need. Like you don't need a map box. We were joking about that, but yeah. you don't need a map box necessarily. Yeah, you, don't. you don't need, you know, you don't need a a eight hundred dollar mic. You don't need this thing. Mm-hmm. You don't need a big, you know, aperture light. You can get some newer lights or some Amaran lights. So you can you find what works for you. Find what works for you in your budget, and like don't go into debt for gear. Like just find what works for you in, in the moment. Rent gear. I think renting is criminally underrated for gear True. especially and kind of go go through that process instead of kind of trying to build out like whatever like your favorite youtuber or favorite videographer yeah. uses because <laughs> that you won't feel comfortable in it like they built it out yeah. to be comfortable in their gear as opposed to like what you're going to feel comfortable in yeah i totally agree diminishing return is so important with buying mm-hmm. gear and the 80 20 rule is so important just like those two Two rules are huge when I think about buying gear, and it is just a tool. Honestly, sometimes I feel even a little bit more creative when I just am shooting on my phone. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's also about the feeling that you kind of have with the gear and your relationship to it, and how, like, because I don't think at a certain point, you know, buying a better camera makes you, makes the videos better. At a certain point, it's like buying a better camera only really helps with the creative workflow and the client experience or production value. I don't really think at a certain point, it's like it is a diminishing return of a better camera won't just like give you a straight up better video. It's like you got to put more work into it almost to even get that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's definitely a lot to think about when with camera gear. But I agree with you. I'd if you just like want stuff to look good, I'd almost recommend just you know putting a bunch of money into audio and lighting more than more than the camera. But mm-hmm. 
and also learning how to use those things. Like, like we talked, like yeah. you talked about, like those, like buying an, if you, if you aren't good on your ADD, buying an FX3 or an FX6 isn't going to mm-hmm. make you better. Like you still have to understand the basics of, you know, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, yeah. what different lenses do, why different lenses act the way they do. If you're shooting a log profile, learning how to, work with that like what that does like why not just oh it looks cool like why does it why does mm-hmm. it look cool well, how do you edit it learning like just camera movement but also the other thing i wanted to say is like buying things once is so much better than you know buying things twice and that, that seems yeah. like dumb but like buying buying good things once is better than buying like a mediocre thing twice so like i've i've had this happen recently where i I went a little bit cheaper on a gimbal because I, I was like, I just really needed a gimbal right now. I'm going to go a little bit. I got the Cyan Crane 3S, which is a, it's a great gimbal for what it is, but it's really heavy and really hard to use. And it's kind of unwieldy in my opinion. So I really wish I would have saved up, you know, $400 more and gotten a Ronin or an RS3 or an RS2 or whatever. So now I'm like, I'm kind of eating that a little bit of like, I got to sell my crane. I got to buy the Ronin. So like, mm-hmm. A, rent the gear before you buy it if you can and kind of get the figure out if you really like it and B, buy it once. Like if, if you need to do an extra shoot to get that $400 to buy the, the piece of gear that you really think will be better, buy it once. Don't buy the cheap lights. Don't buy the cheap mic. Don't buy the cheap gimbal and then have to buy the nicer one again. Just, just save up buy the nice one first and learn how to use it because it's going to be way more expensive to do, the, do it twice. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of closing on the podcast, unless you have anything else we want to talk about, I just kind of want to give you an opportunity to kind of promote what you're doing right now. You talked about going, actually, before we do that, to kind of talk about your move to LA, what, what, how that came about, why you, why you chose that route and what you're going to be doing out there. Yeah, I'm doing it because it sounds like the scariest and hardest thing to do right now. That's the only big reason because I don't want to regret when I'm older, Mm -hmm. not kind of following this dream of doing music tour content and working for YouTube channels. And that's really what I want to be doing. I love Indianapolis, but there is the opportunity here for that specifically isn't the best place to be. So Mm -hmm. I really want to go out there and take on opportunities like that and do those things and those dreams that I really wanted to do when I first started and do tour content for an EDM festival or an artist or whatever, or, you know, help out video editing or content producing on a YouTube channel. Cause that's really where I want my career to be and what I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I love everything happening here in Indy and I love my, all my friends are growing and, I could really focus on the business aspect of it if I want to. And there's so much, I'm there's so much momentum with that. But at the end of the day, I feel like if I continue here for five years, I'm going to regret not spending my young twenties out there. So yeah, I need to use this time and go to LA, live there for two to five years and really figure out <clears throat> or really chase that dream of, of doing that type of work. Or else I feel like I'm going to regret it. And I'll definitely advise that to everyone too, that like the younger you are, you have so much time to be risky. And that sounds like the riskiest thing I could think of. And like, (laughs) I need to do that before I regret it. And that's just the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Which it's tough. It'll be sometime in January, 2024 or early 2024. So I'll be staying here for a bit. And wrapping up some client stuff, I'll put Navi Productions on pause and just go out there and freelance doing doing all that. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I feel like I feel like LA it, I don't know. I don't know I don't there's more I can say about this, but it's just it's better. Like I don't I feel like just the environment out there, the the sun out there, like mm-hmm. the the people, the food, the climate also especially for videography like there's you know you can go the influencer route you can go the music artist route you can go the business route like whatever you want to do like the agency route there's so much out there and like i spent 
I spent all of last summer out in LA and practically I think I had a month Dang. where I was back in Indiana, but then I can't want to back out there. It wasn't for work, unfortunately, but it's just being out there felt good. It felt right. It felt fun. It was exciting. There's so much going on. So yeah. I feel like, yeah, if you're in your twenties, like there really is no better place to be. If you can make it work for you, like definitely go, go out there. I, I yeah. would hundred percent agree with you on that. It definitely comes out of cost financially, yes. but that's, that's all right. Yeah. Um, I was, I've, whenever I talked to my family, I was planning on moving out to LA for work out of college and like, everybody's like, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. And I'm like, correct. But it's that's not so going to stop me, it's, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. I'll make it work. Like I will live yeah. frugally to make it work. Yeah. Cause I just, I love being out there. And so, yeah, I, I hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. And the, I went up out there last month to just check out like and meet new people there. And the, the content creator community out there is so like down to earth, nice, genuine, good people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes from the outside, like you get opinions of people like saying that like the people there are like so surface level and whatever, but like the people I met there or in the people I met there and got plugged into are just like really great people in there. Just, I feel like creatively levels above me and I would love mm-hmm. to, um, the big shift for doing all this is I want to focus less on my business skills right now of the entrepreneur type stuff and focus more back on the art of what I used to focus on and focus mm-hmm. more on those creative skills. And that's like the best place to do it. That's where everyone that's where like the best people are that do that. And so I really, I think about like the state that I'm in right now as a 21 year old, as like, I'm still in metaphorical college right now. Yeah. Yeah. And like, this is to go get my major in like creative content video production. Like I, I just don't think, I don't think of this as like, um, I'm there yet. I'm just think of this as like a learning phase still. So I think that's definitely a good way to just think about learning in general is that like it's it's always on, ongoing and the more you learn, the more you could leverage that in the future. And I just want to keep learning right now and this would be a huge learning opportunity. So absolutely. Yeah. I have a friend that's doing she's doing kind of what you're doing for like only like three weeks. She's kinda of going out there, one way ticket, just kind of kind of she has friends out there. She's people that she's met and she's just, she's done the same thing, like all the people she's met are super down to earth. They're great. They're great humans. They're great people to work with. She's a videographer too, a photographer as well. So yeah, I completely agree with you and I'm wish you the best of luck on that. Thanks. Now, while you're still in Indiana, I'll give you a chance to kind of promote your the work you're doing and kind of what you're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, dude, it's always a tough question because I'm like, what what's the job title to give myself? But I guess it would be like, Nobby Productions is client facing. So I'm a video producer at that my production company. And then on the freelancing side of things, I do freelance camera department. So it's DPing stuff, camera operating stuff, AC, assistant camera, and a lot of that on other people's sets. So those are like the two main things that actually make money. But what I'm doing in the background, (laughs) what I'm doing in the background is really focusing on content creation on like for music artists and YouTube channels. And that's really what my, the craft is that I'm trying to like really do when I have free time, because Mm -hmm. that's like the main thing that I want to stay focused on and not like production work in general. I want to be on that, the content creator industry rather than the the production industry. Yeah. 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 And sense. definitely not on this side of the camera. I want to be on the, the behind the camera, not, not in front. Absolutely. So yeah. So I'm really trying to like do a lot of work on that side and shoot concerts and, and YouTube stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Love it. So I will, I'll make sure to link your, your website and any like socials in the, in the show notes. But yeah, again, thank you for some, coming on the podcast. It's a great conversation. Really enjoyed hearing yeah. your story and, kind of how you've grown and what you're doing in the future. So again, thank you for coming on the rest of us podcast and we will see you next time on the rest of us podcast. Take care. Sweet. Thank you. Noah. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Rest of Us podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider leaving a rating or review on the podcasting platform of your choice. It really helps me see that you are enjoying the episode and also helps other people see the podcast. Also, please consider giving a follow on social media. All the links will be in the show notes down below. Also, in the show notes, there is a link to the Rest of Us newsletter. This is a a platform where I'll send out different takeaways from the episode, resources that were mentioned in the episode, and also uh, notifications about new episodes. So make sure you click the link to subscribe there. So episodes are released weekly, and I will see you on the next episode of the Rest of Us podcast. 